more because they can be scared because they are mm -hmm. isolated and they are in this pandemic, which is making it even worse to be isolated. Mm -hmm. But some of the things that I can think of that would really help on a situation like that is one, of course, more family visits that mm -hmm. we can mask up and make sure that they're okay. But to actually have the touchy feely, you can still keep social distancing, you can still wear masks, but you know something? Nothing replaces that human touch yeah. and it's important. But in particular in homes, something that we've developed here, and I'll see if anybody can see it, we have these little things, they're called an Alexa. <laughs> and you can buy them for 20 bucks and get a little one. They do wonders because mm -hmm. for people who are alone, I can actually tell you that they can read books. You could go in there and say, Alexa, good morning. And then it will respond. Oh. It is responding. Right, yeah. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> Alexa, stop. And it doesn't listen to me now. <laughs> See, it's just like a person. It'll keep you company. But it doesn't just merely say good morning. It gives you something to think about. It gives you this. You can talk to it as long as you say its name, which we won't be doing. Uh, it will talk to you. It'll give you the weather, the news. The more you use it, the better it gets to know you. Uh, it starts to remember and um, bring up your likes when you start using it. So it automatically remembers what you've been doing and reminds you to do those things, which is great for those residents that don't remember what the Alexa is for. Do you guys give them person. to all your residents? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's awesome. Everyone uh -huh. have it. Yeah, so they have an echo or a, um, a, a an dot, dot. A, an echo dot or an Alexa. So if there's a shared room, they'd have one on each side of the room. Uh, we also have them throughout our building. So we use them in the activities room, in our lobby, um, by the front desk. There's always something going on with Alexa all over the place. Several different things going on with Alexa. It, play, it plays books it, you can read books it can read books in a foreign language mm -hmm. so can, there's no holding it back yeah even bring up the daily news if it, it, we have you know some younger residents who want to know what's going on so this is a really good way for them to get the news um if they're not you know if they miss it or whatever if they're not reading the paper this is a good way to get the news too so it will keep them up to date on what's going on now if you happen to be the jealous type my husband has made it his girlfriend because he talks to uh -oh. and says goodnight every night to it. And she is very good and calls him by name. So <laughs> let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> you can give out 40 to the staff so the staff can take them home and learn how to use them as well. So they have them at home too. Which is great because the more we know about how to prevent their loneliness, the better. Because again, mm -hmm. it's all a perception. You got to knock down that perception and not let them think they're isolated. Yeah. Even though they very well may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are going to start incorporating movie nights first. Tonight will be our first night. We've done it in the past, but we're going to start it up again. Uh, we have a big projector in our dining room. We're going to have um, staff getting snow cones from one of our vendors while we're getting residents set up for movie night. We'll play Dumbo. Um, get them popcorn and candy mm -hmm. and all of them, you know, together to watch the movie and staff will be invited to do that too so that everybody can just sit down, take a breather um, and spend a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with the residents, which is very important. Um, and I think that sometimes we forget how important that is for them to take that moment to get down to their level and find out how they feel and what's going on with them. And maybe even put a smile on their face um, if they're not feeling so well. So you guys, you're still not doing family visitors, right? We have been doing visits through our window. Okay. So they, uh, families can come and visit through our front window um, via reception. And how are the residents doing with that? Most, I think, are doing well. Mm -hmm. Some that clearly don't understand why they can't come in, it is not a good thing for yeah. them. It makes them upset. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that's when we ask them to send pictures and I, you know, some of them send FaceTime. videos and FaceTime, which is great. Mm -hmm. Some of them reject phones and I'm telling them, so go to the old fashioned thing that they're used to. It's called a paper picture. 
send some. Send mm -hmm. some in a little letter mm -hmm. every week if you have to. Have a whole bunch printed off and every week send them something. And they open it up and it's different than not seeing it because they don't understand the virus. Right. Plus letters are very much their generation. They are wonderful for them to receive in the mail. I mean, it's exciting to get a letter in the mail. It still is to this day. So uh, I think keeping with that tradition is, is benefit, beneficial to them too, is a benefit. So, I think since, ha since all this started, do you notice the residents like coming together more and doing more things together than they used to when they had families coming in? Mm -hmm. I think the singing, yeah, really does bring the residents together more. Um, and, and staff, yeah, staff getting involved and getting everyone involved. Um, I think that for the most part, we're kind of lucky that most residents don't really understand what's going on. Um, but staff always does. So they're, they always have that, you know, in their minds and coming in with a smile and being able to leave the world out there and still do their job to the best of their ability and um, keep the residents, again, happy. Um, I, I really am grateful that not all of them know what's going on out there right now. I think it's a blessing. I was just curious, like if some of the residents that didn't particularly enjoy or want to participate in activities are because of loneliness and not having visitors if they're coming out more. Yeah, yeah, I think so, definitely. They're reaching out to each other to fill that void right now, yeah. And meal times, meal mm -hmm. times are longer because they're enjoying each other's company more as well as ours. And we have a really big veteran staff, some that have been here eight and 10 years, mm -hmm. and we are their family. So a lot of the times, although they're missing their family, they've got their family right here yeah. and it makes them feel safe. Yeah. So that is, again, one of the biggest things is the interaction that you have. It doesn't have to be every day. Mm -hmm. It has to be meaningful. Yeah. yeah. They have to believe it. And that's all about your heart. Yeah. And, you know, you're in the wrong field if your heart's not in it. Because we all know we don't do it to the pay. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you. No, but I think this is very new to everybody, even though it's been months now. I do think it's very new to everybody. And something new happens every day that we have to learn how to deal with. Mm -hmm. But you know something? I'm not sure that all of this is going to be all bad because I think it's a big old wake-up call to us for our future. We all knew something was going to happen at some point. It's got to come to fruition at some point, and maybe this is just part of our wake-up call to say, pay attention to what's going around you, pay attention to your viruses and things like that, and keep your families and other people safe. I think that's mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. It's why we wear our masks, mm -hmm. to keep other people safe. And, you know, if we can get past this pandemic and things open up again, yeah, I do think everything will be different. We will have a new norm. People but that's will be okay. more mindful. More mindful. I actually think on. it's okay to be more mindful. I mean, we see what's going on, and, you know, sometimes having the TV on is the worst thing in the world. Yeah. What's yeah. going on out there scares me to death. I haven't watched TV in two days because I refuse. It makes me so upset. Yeah. And sometimes you've got to remove yourself from that so that you can get back down to your basics of love. Yeah. It's important to love everybody around us because. If we don't do it, we're setting no example for anybody else. Yeah, it's kind of like setting up a false reality inside of the buildings than what's going on outside of the world. Sometimes, too, I think it's, it's our responsibility to go out there. And, you know, I have an elderly woman that I see every two weeks. Every month I do her checkbook for her. God help her. And <laughs> I will tell you, but she clings to that. It's on her calendar. And then she calls me in the other weeks, and we have very long conversations. She lives right in the neighborhood up by Sam's Club. And I just, I'm amazed at how much she looks forward to that, which lets me know she doesn't have a lot of family. And yep, I call them and yell at them. Yes, I do. <laughs> and tell them, call your mama. She expects you. <laughs> and, you know, something, sometimes we need to be jerked out of our regular lives that are so busy and remember those things because we get wrapped up. I do. I will mm -hmm. honestly say I get wrapped up sometimes and I'm like, just this morning, I went, crap. 
It's my sister's birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday? Nope. My sister, Kat, who's very oh, disabled. Wow. And I'm like, well, we're going to have to do something with flowers or something today. But I'm going to do something because, again, she is disabled. And she just moved. Her husband just died maybe several months ago. She's in bad shape. And I've visited her several times. She's uh, right down by the North Carolina border. And no, it, it's not my favorite thing. In fact, I'll be the first to tell you, she's kind of whiny. And, you know, it's very stressful for me to actually go. But, you know, something, sometimes we have to take ourselves out of our comfort zone to make sure other people are in the right zone. Yeah. The more we true. do that and the more we concentrate on giving of ourselves, the better off this whole world will be. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Do you have any COVID cases at um heritage inn right now no ma'am no. very good let's mm -hmm. celebrate <laughs> we've been very and, very lucky mm -hmm. and we're very very good because our employees honor their jobs for the most part mm -hmm. and i think that when they go home they truly go home with a few exceptions and yes we look at facebook and we do look at things like that to make sure that they're doing the right things because they have to come to work and the thing we don't want is we wear masks all day. And that means anywhere from 8, 12, and 16 hours sometimes. Yeah. Believe me, I'm wearing this mask for more than one purpose. This complexion has seen its worst. <laughs> 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 you have <laughs> Maggie. <laughs> yes, I have Maggie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. But, yeah, I mean, there's just so much to go through. Again, though, you bring it right back to the loneliness. It's a perception. Knock it out of the ballpark, take it out of your your vocabulary and get in there and get rid of the loneliness because again, it can be done. And finding a way to be able to do that with 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 ourselves and with our residents is is a challenge sometimes. I also think that you don't always recognize it. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes, you know, loneliness when you internalize it. <laughs> and the stress and everything else, it manifests into psychological things and physical things mm -hmm. where you then need a doctor. Mm -hmm. And that's terrible if it gets to that point, but it's inevitable that it will. Yeah. So I would highly suggest folks that recognize that in somebody to however gently they can do it, to remind them that their doctor is there to help those feelings feel better. Yeah. Because and again, that's what it's for. Find a way to reinvent yourself continuously so that you can help those that need it. Um, I think every day, maybe every resident or staff member, you approach in a different way um, and, and try to pick their brain and find out where they are and do the best you can to try to lift them up and then do it again with somebody else in a completely different way. Have you guys seen like an increase in the mental health aspect of it? No. Really, I think we're so on top of it. I think if we neglected it, I think it would be horrible. Mm -hmm. I think if we didn't get people at that window for some of our residents, mm -hmm. it would be horrible. Yeah. They need that in their lives. And again, if you supply it for them, you can prevent it. Yeah. For some of them, I don't know that there's anything anybody can do to reach them. But that's why I say sometimes a physician is in a good place because a lot of the times, especially in the elderly, which of course we're not talking about just the elderly, they put a lot of faith in what their doctor says. They really do. Mm -hmm. And if the doctor says that this will make you feel better, <laughs> even if it's temporary, they're going to grab it. Yeah. And guess what? It works. Even if um, it is temporary. You, ladies, you know my interest with Alzheimer's with my father-in-law. Um, mm -hmm. How how are your Alzheimer's patients dealing with? Uh, you are wearing masks. I mean, is that affecting them? How are you dealing with that? I was going to say something about that earlier. Uh, surprisingly, it's not been uh, really even recognized. I, my, personally, I'm not sure how mm -hmm. they, they have, but I haven't had one resident ask me why yeah. at all. I mean, um, I was worried about what I would say in response to those who, again, may not really understand or those that understand very, very well what's going on, how I would respond mm -hmm. to that. I have yet to been put in that position. So I That's guess good. they're just kind of going with the flow. Um, maybe it's a little bit of trust. We know what we're doing, so we'll just let them do that. I, I don't know. I, that's a really good question. I'll have to ask our staff to see if they've encountered that. 
Mm -hmm. I think I've only had one negative response out of the whole time. And the only neg and I think that would have been a negative response with or without the mask. Mm -hmm. So having said that, I think sometimes they will be mean, like we don't understand what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But you know something? I back up a few feet, pull it down so that they can see who I am, and they're just as negative. So I don't really <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have well, one. The, the other half, too, is like with you all remember with John, um, we had a hard time keeping his ear, hearing aids and all of that. Mm -hmm. So that's another issue. How are you all dealing with uh, those that have a hard time hearing? Because I know John a lot of times depended on those cues of seeing our face. Right. Right, that's a good question. Um, I think maybe even maybe getting on down on their level a little, getting closer to their ears. We have not, um, we have used um, white erase boards and paper and pen. If we have to go old school with it, we will. Um, I, again, I don't really have not ran into that situation either. I am sure that the girls out there have, but I think just, and because of, us wearing these all the time, you speak louder, you speak more clearly, you don't want to have to pull your mask down to get your statement across. So I think that's kind of, we're just used to that. I, I, I was really surprised, that is a good question, that we have not been asked continuously what's going on. I had one resident say to me, if you guys are wearing those, how come I'm not wearing one? So I gave him one too. He didn't understand what was going on, but he put it on and he wears it sometimes, but that's really it. Um, I, I'm really, curious to find out well, if and you other know, people if you're looking at here. the hearing impaired in general we all know that they like to misplace those hearing aids often yeah. <laughs> and i think that they are very adjusted to us speaking very loudly yeah you speak now. Mm -hmm. um sometimes i'll sit in my office going oh my god i can't even hear on my phone <laughs> because right. we speak so loudly to them yeah but that's what makes them comfortable yeah. So, as they say, loud and proud. Yep, we have t-shirts that say so. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's uh, good to see you, ladies. You you so took excellent to care you. of John, and and it's good to hear that things are going well. And I'm so glad that this has not hit Heritage Gym. Thank you so as much. As yes. You gotta knock on wood, every one of you. Yeah. <laughs> Every day is something new, but we are rolling with the punches and um, getting to our new norm, our new normal mm -hmm. around here. Um, I think that we've all been really, really surprised at how well our staff has taken all of yes, this. They, they are they rocks. We've, le you know, we lean on them so often, we don't even realize we're leaning on them as much as we are. But they have really taken this extremely seriously. Um, you know, they're families. We're family here, so the continuation of um, them just being so respectful of what's going on is is amazing. We have a really amazing crew here. And I'm not just saying that because I work here, um, but they, they surprise all of us, even families. I mean, and they've been also really great too. We've had some who just don't get it and they don't understand and they, and they want something changed for them, but sticking with it has gotten us where we are right now. Um, so that's a good thing. But again, the staff, has been so helpful in us finding our way right now. And you know who else has been like incredibly helpful? Our extended families. Yeah. Because let me tell you something, they make the attempt to come and visit through the window. Mm -hmm. And I will quote without giving names that one person actually said to us, of course we go nowhere. My young little boy here and I stay home all the time. We order our groceries in. We will never break these rules because my dad's in there and, and I want to hug him the most mm -hmm. to me is the day visitation comes I want to freely go in there say I'm disease free and run with it and be able to hug him yeah and that tells me a lot about our families and what mm -hmm. they're doing right. to just get back into the realm of what's the norm. And masks and food oh my and god food. yeah you yeah. have no idea we have families uh, that used to be here as like yourself that donate masks mm -hmm. that they make at home mm -hmm. um we have had so many we have food donations mm -hmm. we have all sorts of things that all the families are bringing in for us because they're so appreciative of us keeping their families safe yeah and it is, it's a hard job. 
but you know something? We can do it. Yeah. <laughs> we can all do it. Yes, we just we have can. to put our minds to it. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta work harder and smarter now. It's just exactly. that simple. We exactly. really do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but families have been great. Staff has been great. So far, we've had a very smooth ride, um, I think, because of the participation and, and, and the mindfulness of everybody here. So I think we're doing pretty good so far. I sit there and I look at how ugly the world is out there right now, and it's ugly. Mm -hmm. And I think about our little teeny corner here and how we have such a mixed population here, um, which... Sometimes you don't see that, but in our little mixed population, I'll tell you what, talk about just the good space to be in and you step out into the real world and it's like, ugh, let's go back. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a safe day. place. Yeah. It's I a mean, safe place from that crazy world out there. The, yeah, the heritage in for sure. I know I'm proud to be able to come to work yeah. every day and feel good about it and ignore some of the things that are going on and mm. yep I, I break down and get into it sometimes i'm not everybody's favorite on facebook anymore but you know something it's called life and you it's hit and miss and you have to go from your heart yeah and blocking out what's going on out there and coming in here and still giving them um what they need mm. whatever it may be without our own thoughts getting in the way so it, it's it was probably a challenge in the beginning because everybody was really worried and nervous and unsure. And um, now we kind of have something to look forward to. Hopefully everything goes well and we get to get to phase three and we can start having visitors again. Um, so that's kind of something, again, we can all look forward to, families can look forward to. It's something that you can hold on to for right now. Whether we get there, who knows, but it is something. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. I think that helps with families and again the residents that understand what's going on. Baby steps. Baby, Baby steps. steps. And for then sure. you get where you need to be instead of the giant one that sets you back into no steps. Yeah. I find that they're loving the outside. Yeah. Just going out there in the yard and breathing in some fresh air no matter how hot and muggy and yucky it is. <laughs> yeah. They're out there going, woohoo, it's so nice. You yeah. know, and just even if it's five minutes of fresh air, it makes all of that loneliness go away mm -hmm. at least for a little bit yeah the sun does help we've had so many gloomy days on top of gloominess that the yeah. sun does help a whole lot and getting them out there to soak that up a little bit is really important we've been doing that a lot here oh kathy i see your face on there you got something to say <laughs> <laughs> no you guys do great it came on, didn't it? <laughs> you do such a great job. I, you know how I feel about you guys. Thank you. I, I, I did want to ask one question though. Like, I've thought about this a lot. If, if someone is, you know, at the end of their life at this stage, are you allowing the family to come in? We actually are. Yes. So we screen them, um, gown them, glove them. They completely understand our precautions. But we normally we have a large population on hospice, so mm -hmm. we at the end of life, yes, absolutely, our families are allowed to come in. That's good because I think that's one of the saddest things that I've been trying to, you know, not think about so much is you know, not being able to be with your loved one. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then the funeral arrangements are different than they yeah. would have been prior prior to the yeah. COVID. So we want to make sure that they are involved and they are here. Um, if we have the room, we move the resident to a private room so that the family can just mm, stay. They stay good. overnight. Good. So let them stay. Can yeah. I add to that? or Please do. Um, I wish, I, I'm sure my photographer, uh, I have a professional photographer that went out to with me to a listing that I uh, put up a couple weeks ago. And he had a story to tell. That his mother-in-law um, got COVID and his grandmother-in-law got COVID mm. and this they're here and so um, she was in the hospital uh, she got a respiratory um, uh, she asked specifically 
for, um, she, she was on a respirator. They were told to basically say goodbye to her family. Um, they would not let her visitors whatsoever. Mm. And, um, and she literally, I don't care if I'm a guinea pig, find And he did. And he administered recovered mm. like within two days <clears throat> but her mother so the grandmother-in-law of my photographer um, the grandmother-in-law was in a nursing home she got COVID and so did a couple of dozen others unfortunately none of them were taken to the hospital mm. None of them were administered a um, respirator, none of them. And they all were families and and on top of that, none of them got and one hundred percent of those who nursing home died. Wow. That was a horrible story. I almost cried. Me that story. There's a and lot of horror stories like that out there right now that have been mm -hmm. going on um, other places in the nursing home. I think because of all of these stories, the nursing homes, the assisted livings, they're a scary place for most people. They do. They just don't want to have to deal with them if they don't have to. Um, in their mind, they've already created a scenario as to what would happen, they think, if something like that went down, which is very unfortunate. That is such a sad situation. It's a sad situation, too, that a lot of the times people will think of even our assisted living. They're scared of us. And I feel like we're probably the safest place there is right now. Mm -hmm. We close those doors. Nobody's allowed in. Everybody gets tested. I feel like we're so safe here. It's crazy. But people are scared to death to even come by. Yeah. yeah. And that's just, it's all here, just like loneliness. It's mm -hmm. a perception. Mm -hmm. You have to knock out the perceptions and yeah. go forward with what's real. Yeah. I think a lot of assisted living homes, nursing homes, um, are perceived that way just because of the story. The whole the horror stories that you're hearing about what's going on. Like what you told. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is a horrible story. I mean, and people are dying, I mean, everywhere. And again, we're human. So you're going to get people that follow the rules, people who don't follow the rules. Mm -hmm. We live in America, and this is definitely going to go on. Mm -hmm. So we have yeah. to only... We have to watch our own little box, make sure we're doing the right things. I think yep. us as, as humans first, if we were in that situation and one of our parents were passing away, it would be the most important mm -hmm. to be able to be with them. And I think some people would even say regardless of the outcome, that is where they would want to be. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to put yourself in that situation so that you can continue to be human and think like a good human would think um, it's so unfortunate that there's some, some places just don't have that choice and they don't have that option. Yeah. I'm sure that he, I'm sure that his, especially his wife, uh, cause of, that they were, that her grandmother-in-law was at heritage instead, you oh. know, with you guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, yep. You know, we're all a little different. And we all do things a little different, and that's what makes it so personal. Yeah. yeah. The, I wanted to tell you, client uh, who is uh, due to close on their house um, this month, and a. I'm not going to tell you what their position is, but they are high up, and they know a lot about UVA Hospital. And they said that UVA Hospital, uh, they uh, basically were turning away. And uh, so what we're not seeing is the results of uh, people that are dying at home. Mm -hmm. Getting um, any treatment, they're being turned and have been turned away from. 
and that they the during the uh, the height of the quarantine, um, the maximum uh, uh, occupancy of UVA hospital was twelve percent wow. maximum, and is that even nurses and doctors are being furloughed. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And like I said, this is a very, first, I mean, firsthand, he said that um, is uh, every person who has, uh, they, they have been basically ordered, I don't know by who, on the death certificate COVID, whether they've died of COVID or not. Wow. And the reason for it, the um, insurance companies pay an additional $35,000 if the cause of death is COVID. Wow. And these are, these are firsthand I mean, this is firsthand that I'm getting that, that information. Um, so, and it's a shame that our COVID situation comes down to dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like really Isn't it? To, it's it's disgusting. Awful. It's, it's all it's about money. Despicable. It's despicable. People yep. will always find a way to benefit off of even the worst tragedies out there. Yeah, it's really sad. You brought up a really good point about well, hospitals, but. Um, a lot of people are refusing to go to the hospitals, even for right. minor things because of the COVID fear and not really sure what to expect from the hospitals. I think that's another awakening for people is what do we expect from our local hospitals after this and how will things, how will we go about those kinds of things? Um, right. You hear on the news all the time about people going home with serious things going on with them and they die at home because they're more afraid of um, being in the hospital mm -hmm. than they are of being at home. Well, and think about it. Think about it. If you got this horrible virus, would you go to the hospital? Some of us would say yes. Some of us would say no. Yeah. If I couldn't breathe. Yeah. Right. I mean, if it got to the point where you couldn't breathe, I think most of us would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then some of us will never. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a whole new chapter. It's, it's, it's something else. Our thinking, that whole scope mm -hmm. of our thinking has now been brought to the front yeah and it's making us think out of the box it's making us think of different things and like i said some good comes out of every bad yeah and Dude, your your topic today of loneliness is excellent you brought up a wonder many wonderful points but as i'm hearing everybody talking i'm also realizing another good topic would be stress management yeah. um, because yeah. it is a silent killer it's, mm -hmm. you know and especially with our elderly who can't get out and can't exercise out that stress out of their bodies so yeah. that's another area to really explore not only for our elderly but for our caretakers because mm -hmm. ladies you know firsthand the stress that can be involved in caretaking my family experienced it as well uh, my husband he ended up having a heart attack over the silent stress. He survived it, thank goodness, but we didn't realize the impact of stress on caregivers. Mm -hmm. But as I'm hearing everybody talk, it's not just the elderly, the caregivers, but in today's world, all of us are experiencing stress and it is very um, toxic to our health. So maybe mm -hmm. that's another area we can explore in the future as well. I think it's a great topic. I also I think too. it's a great thing to let people know it is perfectly okay to cry and to get all that stuff out. We mm. can't all follow our own advice, but it is good advice. Yeah. Because I learned that when my parents died, I was one of those little military brats. We weren't allowed to cry unless there was blood involved. There was no crying. And you know, I actually saw both of my parents die inside months of each other from diseases. Mm. And I never cried. And then Two years later, oh, did it catch up to me? And that's what happens. Keep internalizing all that stuff and not letting it out. And you have to count on your friends. I've got these two great guys. And they, they help me through every day. And I hope I do the same for them. Because although we may not always agree, we may get mad at each other. But guess what? 
when it comes right down to it, we're sisters. Yeah. And that is how it's at. You've got to rely on other people, which again is a hard lonely, thing to do sometimes. Yes. They'll get those lonely people and make mm -hmm. them not lonely. Mm -hmm. It's our, our job. And I don't care if it's in an assisted living or in private duty and you go to their homes. I don't care if you're using an Alexa. I don't care what it is. You got to do something to better people's lives around you. Mm -hmm. And if everybody thought that way, we could combat that loneliness and make it just a perception. I got to tell you, um, I don't know how much time we have or where, where the next moments are going, <laughs> but this has affected me on a personal basis. Leave us with something. Um, I have three grandchildren and my daughter and son-in-law live and we had done that on the side and into family survival coming together and um, and we actually have completely separate areas in our in our home what that does during the quarantine was has been amazing we have been able to we are very self-contained um, and my daughter needed help with the five-year-old uh, granddaughter who was who is in a who is in a private school so therefore she's doing not kindergarten work but at first grade work okay so we had i helped with the um uh teach teaching her so homeschooling okay and one day she got uh, she actually you know one of those light bulbs went off and she was like wow and and she said, Nina, you're such a good teacher. Oh. And, <laughs> yes, and she, she took my hands, or her hands, and she took my uh, um, cheeks in her hands. And she goes, Nina, will you promise me something? And I said, what's that, honey? And she says, will you promise me you will never oh. leave me? <laughs> Sweet. So, Sweet. <laughs> and she horrible. said, and I said, I sure will. She says, and I, I, she says, will you pray with me? You know, and she started praying for her, her friends that she's missing. Mm -hmm. You know, she goes, because there's sick people and mm -hmm. we can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And she was praying for them and she was praying for all of us. And she was praying for uh, for everybody to get back together soon, and all this. And I'm like, she's five. Yeah. Wow, awesome. You know, and so, so here I'm. Here's here going. <laughs> Probably more mature than all of us. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, they're it's just been... born geniuses these days. <laughs> Immediately geniuses once you give birth to them. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Always smarter than their parents. Yes, mm -hmm. but they're so honest and um, they they keep it real all the time. It's refreshing to um, to to listen to them talk and to yep. hear the things that they have to say. I mean, they blow you away sometimes with how much they really do know and. Um, can put together in their heads about what's going on. That's that's amazing. It goes back to the old saying, hire them all when they're 12 and know it all. <laughs> 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 and at the at the I don't think so. Well thank you so much ladies for your valuable information and input and ideas and congratulations on how well your facility is doing and I'm sure that's directly related to you and your staff. So that's right. Thank Lots you. of love there. It's You're commendable. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Everybody.